What if ChatGPT wanted to take admission to a graduate school in US and appeared in the physics GRE test? How much is it going to score? Hi everyone, I'm Divya Joridas. Welcome back to my channel. In my previous video, I asked ChatGPT, which is an artificial intelligence chatbot, some questions related to physics and we saw how it performed. It did quite well in certain cases and quite badly in few other cases. Now ChatGPT is a language-based artificial intelligence that has been trained with huge amounts of text-based information available across the internet. As a result of this, it is capable of having conversations with human beings, providing various kinds of informations to different kinds of questions and also solving problems related to physics. So instead of asking some random physics problems that I did in my last video, let's ask ChatGPT some questions from a standardized test like physics GRE. So I went to the GRE website and downloaded a model question paper that was available there and selected 10 questions that I'm going to ask to ChatGPT. Now I have a few criteria for these questions because ChatGPT is a text-based AI. Therefore, I'm not going to give questions where some diagram is involved, where deducing some information from a diagram is required. So those questions are out. I'm also not going to give questions which are heavy in mathematics. As we saw in my previous video, ChatGPT is not that good in uh, mathematical computation. It was making mistakes even when uh, some sort of a simple mathematical operations like multiplication or division or trigonometric functions were involved. Hence, I'm going to keep questions as simple as possible that do not require huge amount of mathematical computations. We also saw in the last video that it is not capable of solving problems that require a huge amount of conceptual understanding of a problem. So for example, if there is a conceptual understanding of multiple topics that needs to be combined to come up with a solution, I'm also not going to ask those questions. So we're going to ask questions which are simple, straightforward, either based on some theory or based on some formula. All these questions are also going to be from different domains in physics. In my last video, I asked mostly mechanics and quantum mechanics related questions. But today I have come up with questions from electricity magnetism, thermal physics, special theory of relativity, quantum mechanics, planetary mo motion, etc. So we will look at ChatGPT's responses for all these different fields, okay? So I've taken 10 such questions and arranged them in increasing difficulty. I'm going to score this test, okay? So we will see out of 10 questions, how much chat GPT is capable of solving and what is the score that chat GPT gets in this GRE physics test. So let us start. So this is the first question. By definition, the electric displacement current through a surface S is proportional to A, magnetic flux through S, B, rate of change of magnetic flux through S, C, time integral of the magnetic flux through S, electric flux through S, and lastly, rate of change of electric flux through S. Now, this is a very simple, straightforward, formula-based question, which is kind of easy to solve because according to Maxwell's equations, a changing electric field produces a magnetic field which ultimately results in electric displacement. So the correct answer to electric displacement current through a surface S being proportional to is option E, the rate of change of electric flux through S. So let's see what ChatGPT answers. All right. Okay, it gave a very simple, short, but a correct answer. That is the rate of change of electric flux through S. So essentially, electric displacement current depends upon the rate of change of electric flux. Let's move on to the second question. So in the next question, which of the following is true about any system that undergoes a reversible thermodynamic process? A. There are no changes in internal energy. B. The temperature of the system remains constant. C. The entropy of the system and its environment remains unchanged. D. The entropy of the system and its environment must increase and E, the net work done by the system is zero. This question is based on the second law of thermodynamics, which says that for a reversible process, the entropy of the universe is a constant, and for an irreversible process, the entropy of the universe increases. So let's see what Chad GPT responds to this. So the correct option is, by the way, option C, the entropy of the system and its environment remains unchanged. There you have it. It's a correct answer. A short correct response. See, the entropy of the system and its environment remains unchanged. So this is true for a reversible thermodynamic process. Let's move on to the next question. For which of the following thermodynamic processes is the increase in internal energy of an ideal gas equal to the heat added to the gas? A. Constant temperature. B. Constant volume. C. Constant pressure. D. Adiabatic process. E. Cyclic process. 
Now in thermodynamics, the increase in internal energy is equal to the heat transferred to a system and the work done on the system. Which means that if the internal energy is supposed to be equal to the heat added to the gas, the work done on the gas must be zero, which simply means constant volume. Because for constant volume, the work done on the gas is zero. So the correct option is B. Let's see what chat GPT responds with. Again, <laughs> correct answer, three questions, three correct answers till now. So let's move on to the next question. All right, so this is a question from photoelectric effect. Light of variable frequency N shines on a metal surface of a photoelectric tube. Einstein's theory of photoelectric effect predicts that A, work function of the metal is proportional to the frequency. B, work function of the metal is proportional to wavelength. C, current in the tube is a linear function of wavelength. D, potential difference necessary to stop the emitted electrons is a linear function of the frequency above the threshold frequency and E, potential difference necessary to stop the emitted electrons is equal to the work function. Now, if you have studied the Einstein's photoelectric effect equation, you would probably know that the potential difference is actually a measure of the maximum kinetic energy of the emitted electrons and because the kinetic energy of the emitted electrons uh, depends upon the frequency, therefore, the correct option is D. That means the potential difference necessary to stop the emitted electrons is a linear function of the frequency above the threshold frequency. So let's see what ChatGPT responds to this particular question. Again, correct answer. Come on, yeah. four questions, four correct answer. Very good, excellent. Now, in my earlier video, ChatGPT was quite verbose, you know, it was giving me explanations to the questions I asked, but these are MCQ questions. So since there are options to every question, it is just giving me the short answer. That's it. It's not giving me any kind of an explanation. So four questions, four correct answers. Let's move on to the next question. This is a question from uh, quantum mechanics. A single electron atom has the electron in the L is equal to two state. The number of allowed values of the quantum number ml is what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So essentially L here represents the azimuthal quantum number and ml represents the magnetic quantum number. So if you're familiar with quantum mechanics, the restrictions on these quantum numbers is such that ml can take values of minus L minus L plus 1 up to L minus 1 and L. So therefore, it can have a total of 2L plus 1 values. So essentially, ml gives us an idea about the number of orbitals that is present in a subshell. So because L is 2, that means it is in a D a subshell, there are going to be 5 orbitals for this particular question. So the answer should be E5. So let's see what ChatGPT gives us as a response. So it gave a wrong answer, three, but why? Shall we ask why? Let's ask why it gave, gave us a wrong answer. Oh, that is disappointing. Uh, because it clearly says that, again, it's making a, uh, it's making a lot of confusion. It is quite, <laughs> it is quite confused. Uh, 2 is not the principal quantum number, it's actually the azimuthal quantum number. But for value L is equal to 2, it correctly says that ML can take values of minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2. But even then, it says the number of allowed values of ML is 3. So you see, it's quite surprising that sometimes uh, difficult questions chat GPT answers so easily but sometimes these easy questions, it makes such horrible mistakes that just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> all right, okay, fine. After all, at the end of the day, it's a language based model, right? So probably it was not developed to maintain these kind of logical or mathematical consistencies through its arguments. So the argument it makes is that ML can take these five values, but it gives us the answer three. That's incorrect. Anyways, let's move on. All right, so this is a question that is based on planetary motion. Consider two identical systems, one and two, each consisting of a planet in circular orbit about a much heavier star. For system one, the radius of the orbit is a, and for system two, the radius of the orbit is 4a. Which of the following gives the ratio t1 by t2 of the period of the system one to the period of the system two? This is a question basically that is dependent on the Kepler's third law. So the Kepler's third law says that if a planet is orbiting around a a star, then the square of the time period of revolution is directly proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis A. Now, because this is a circular orbit, the semi-major axis A is basically equal to the radius. If you perform the calculations, the answer comes out to be option number D, which is 1 by 8. So let's ask ChatGPT this very same question and see what answer we get. Ah, it made a mistake. So you see, whenever questions involve uh, some kind of mathematical 
uh, computations, it seems to make these mistakes, by the way. See, I mean, it began uh, perfectly fine. The period of a planet in circular orbit about a star is given by this formula. This is, by the way, very much a correct formula for the time period of revolution, where T is a time period and other parameters. Uh, the two systems are identical except for the radius, so we can take the ratio. So it has taken the ratio. So it knows the formula. It has plugged in the values correctly, but it seems to have made this very silly mistake, a very mathematical mistake. So this is a square root of a term which is a cube upon 4a cube. By the way, it's supposed to be 4a cube, okay? It's a cube of 4a. So the answer should come out to be 1 by 8 if you compute it, but chat GPT computed it to be 1 by 4, which is like very disappointing, you know, because it is like a reservoir of so much information, it knows this kind of a formula. I mean, even most students would probably not remember this kind of a formula if they are not, if they have not studied uh, planetary motion recently. So it is a reservoir of so much information, and yet it ends up making these kind of silly mathematical mistakes. So I think probably in the next couple of iterations, the this kind of a AI needs also to be programmed not just on language but also on some kind of a mathematical congruency. So capable of making mathematical computation, at least simple mathematical computations like these, because if it has arrived at this particular expression, it should come up with the correct expression. However, because this is a language based model, it made a very silly mistake. So it loses this mark. Let's move on. So this is a question that is based on the uh, atomic model, Bohr's atomic model, okay? The emission spectrum of a doubly ionized lithium atom atomic number 3 is identical to that of a hydrogen atom in which all the wavelengths are a decreased by a factor of 9, b decreased by a factor of 49, c decreased by a factor of 81, d increased by a factor of 9, and e increased by a factor of 81. Now this basically goes back to the emission spectra of hydrogen-like atoms where if an electron jumps from a higher energy level to a lower energy level, the amount of energy that is emitted in the form of a photon is equal to the difference in the energies, which for hydrogen atom is minus 13.6 upon n square electron volt and for hydrogen-like atoms it is minus 13.6 upon n square times z square where z square is the atomic number. So if we do the calculation it turns out that uh, the correct answer is option number A. That means the absorption spectra will consist of wavelengths which are similar to that of hydrogen atom if it is decreased by a factor of 9 or z square. So let's ask this question to chat GPT and see what answer we... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Again, see as we are increasing the difficulty of these questions where certain amount of conceptual understanding is required and it is not just a simple straightforward fact or a problem then chat GPT seems to make these mistakes. Okay, so let us see what reasoning it provides. Uh, again, such a silly reasoning. I mean the initial part is uh, perfectly fine. It says that the emission spectra of an atom is determined by the energy levels. But here, what does it say? So the energy levels are nine times smaller than that of hydrogen, meaning all the wavelengths in the emission spectra are decreased by a factor of nine squares equal to 81 compared to hydrogen spectrum. So decreased by a factor of 49. Come on, man. It's really not making any sense right now. I was having such high expectations. I'm, <laughs> I'm surprised. I mean, the way it gives the right answer sometimes and you are filled with so much hope and then it comes up with such gibberish like this that doesn't make any sense. So essentially it gave us uh, four correct answers and three incorrect answers. And by looking at this, how it's performing as we're increasing the difficulty, I really don't have very high hopes, but let's see. Let's finish the test and see what uh, it scores. Okay, so this next question is based on special theory of relativity and more specifically time dilation. A particle decays in two microseconds in its rest frame. If the same particle moves at 0.6 the speed of light in the lab frame, how far will it travel in the lab before decaying? So essentially in its rest frame, the particle has a lifetime of, uh, or we can say proper lifetime of two microseconds. But if we observe the particle traveling at 0.6 the speed of light, then its lifetime will appear dilated. So we can apply the time dilation formula to calculate what its time period is going to be for how long it's going to be survive with respect to the lab frame. So then we can calculate the distance which comes out to be 450 meters. So the correct answer is option number D. So let's see if Chad GPT can do this question. Come on, man. Let's, let's see. Oh shit. It made wrong answer. Four correct options, 
four correct four incorrect options so it made a mistake so let's see what enormous and a silly mistake at this chat box has made so essentially it just uh, used the simple non relativistic calculations it said that it's traveling at a particular speed and it took the time period of uh, that is a proper time period, but you, we can't really take the proper time period because we are observing the particle moving at very high speed. So we need to take the time dilated expression. So clearly chat GPT was unable to replace the time period with the time dilated lifetime. So as I said earlier, conceptual questions which require an understanding of multiple things and it requires you to combine those multiple information to get an answer. That is where chat GPT fails apart from the obvious silly mathematical mistakes. So the mathematics here is probably correct, but clearly it did not incorporate the time dilation expression in the answer. So again, incorrect answer. Let's move ahead. The last two questions. All right. So this is a question based on a three dimensional uh, harmonic oscillator in quantum mechanics. A particle of mass m and spin zero is in a three dimensional isotropic well described by vr is equal to a half m omega square x square plus y square plus z square how many states of energy 7 upon 2 h cut omega so essentially this is a three dimensional harmonic oscillator well and in a three dimensional harmonic oscillator well the energy expression depends upon three quantum numbers nx ny and z so if you perform the calculations the nx ny and z should add up to two so how many possible states are there that can add up to two where nx ny and z can take values of 0 1 2 3 etc so it turns out that there are six possible states. So the correct answer should come out to be six, which is option number D. Let's see if chat GPT can understand this question. Okay, it gave the correct answer. It gave the correct answer. I'm a bit surprised. I mean, compared to the last couple of questions, this gave me the correct answer. Wow. It somehow has a sort of an affinity for quantum mechanics, it seems. So a, a three-dimensional harmonic oscillator can be separated into three independent one-dimensional harmonic oscillators, fine. So it has given the energy expression for a 1D harmonic oscillator, fine. For a three-dimensional case, it gives me the correct energy expression. Very good. Given that the energy is this much, we can set nx, ny plus nz is equal to 7 by 2. Very good. So, okay, forget all these things. So all possible states are 2, 0, 0. Uh, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 2, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. So there are six states that of energy. That is really interesting. Wow, amazing. See, this is what is surprising about this AI is that that the window of its capacity of getting extremely good answers and extremely incorrect and silly answers is so huge that it is just nothing less than surprising, I would say. All right, let's give it the last uh, question. Okay, so this is a question from uh, advanced quantum mechanics. If you have studied quantum mechanics and especially the chapter related to spin angular momentum, then there are these poly spin matrices S, X, S, Y, S, Z or it is more commonly written as uh, sigma x, sigma y, sigma z. So consider the poly matrices S, X, S, Y, S, Z, the product S, X, X, Y is equal to which of the following. So this can be calculated based on the definition of poly matrices. The correct answer, by the way, comes out to be option number E minus uh, sigma y, sigma x. So let us ask this question to chat GPT and see what we get. Uh, okay. So it's clearly wrong, but I didn't really have that much expectations from this question anyways, because this is a little bit of a difficult question. Okay, so it gave the uh, sort of basic, the poly matrices are these matrices used to describe the spin of a particle in quantum mechanics. The matrices are obviously their commutation relationships. Okay, these are commutation relationships. By the way, the answer comes from the anti-commutation relationship also, but as it is very much clear that chat GPT doesn't really understand what it's saying, it is like a language model, so it is capable of uh, finding connections and uh, giving that information to you, but it doesn't really have a conceptual understanding of what it is talking about. So because if it did, uh, if it knew these commut uh, commutation relations, then it would very easily come up with the answer, by the way. So there you have it, 10 questions from Physics GRE, five of which Chad GPT gave the correct answer, five wrong answers. So it scores five out of 10 nearly 50%. Now, what is so interesting about this exercise is that some of the questions ChatGPT gives perfectly fine, reasonable questions. 
Some of these questions, the chat GPT makes such horrible mistakes. So you're kind of oscillating between awe that it is capable of solving some questions and again awe that it is making such horrible and stupid mistakes. Again, I understand that this is a language based model. So it's trying to make connections in language. Therefore, it's, not, it's mathematical accuracy is not that good. But because this is just the beginning, I hope that in the future, whatever uh, artificial intelligence development takes place, they will probably be capable of solving these questions because mathematical computation is not really that hard. Once you come up with the information from some sort of a data, further mathematical calculations should be easy for a computer to do. But here it is making some sort of a mistake. And again, anyways, chat GPT gets 5 out of 10 in physics GRE. That is all for today. I enjoyed making this video. I hope you enjoyed watching the same. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Take care.